Hello everyone, it's Michelle Lupton here and today I'm going to show you how I made this card for Craft Roulette episode 163. So um, Craft Roulette, um, as you know, they um, have a guest each week. This week's guest was uh, Kathy Zilski and she made the most amazing clean and simple card. It was awesome. My card today is not clean and not simple. <laughs> It's one of the more complicated cards that I've made, I think. So um, I'm starting off with this stamp, which is from Gina Kay. And I am stamping it on my card base. I'm just using a little piece of cardstock here as a spacer because I want to um, cut another piece, uh, sorry, stamp onto another piece in about the same location. Not that it really matters that it's exactly in the right spot, but I want to kind of get it right. Um, because I'm going to be cutting out some tag dies from this. So there's my card base done. And here's my other piece, which is just a single piece of cardstock. I'm just cutting it so it's the same size as my card front. And I'm going to pop it down onto um, my panel. Actually, I'm going to remove the card from underneath. There you go. Um, but lay it in basically the same spot. I turned it over because there was a bit of a fingerprint smudge on the other side. Isn't it great? The cardstock is double-sided. So yeah, if you make a mistake on one side, you've always got the other side. All right, so I've got my two stamped images. Now, here's my third one. This I'm stamping on to a piece of Gina K Masking Magic because I am going to cut a mask. And this... There were two things that took me a lot of time with this card. One of them was the fussy cutting um, with this image, which did take me a little while. The other thing that took me a while is that one of the tag dies that I used, I lost right at the beginning. <laughs> I basically did this stamping and then looked down. It's like, where's my die? Where's my die? And yeah, it took me quite a while to find it, actually. Anyway, there's my fussy cutting done except for a few little bits. There are a few little internal bits that I'm just using my craft knife to just get in here um, to get them out. Now, I haven't mentioned the parameters um, yet. So what are the parameters? We have three tags. So not just one, not two, but three tags had to be included. Um, the color scheme was Rose Garden. So I've actually go gone with roses here. Um, we had to use masking and... Um, the last parameter was May, um, as in the month of May. And um, I've incorporated the May bit because May in our family is the birthday month. We have lots of family birthdays in May. So I made this into a birthday card. Anyway, you can see I have stuck my masking magic, my um, fussy cut um, mask on top of the flowers onto the card base. And now I've grabbed out a um, stencil. This is um, actually discontinued stencil from Hero Arts. And I'm just using some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink um, to ink just around the edges. I'm not covering the entire card front. I'm just, I want to add just a little bit of interest to the background. I am actually going to remove this stencil and ink blend around the image as well. So it'll be a tone on tone kind of um, background sort of halo around the flower. So you can see the words there. Well, they're not legible words, but you can see the image from stencil there. And now I'm just going around the edge just to add some more blue. And um, that's all I'm going to be doing on this um, background. I'm going to remove the um, mask and then that'll be done. Okay, now I try to keep the mask intact so I can use it again, but I failed. <laughs> anyway, here is my other image. And what I'm going to be doing is colouring in this image, but then cutting out some tags uh, from it and putting them on top of the other cards. So I thought of cutting out the tags first and then colouring in the bits, but I just thought oh, it would just be easier to see what I'm doing and how everything blends nicely if I just colour the whole thing. So that's what I did. Um, so I'm not showing you the whole lot of my Copic colouring. It's not very complicated Copic colouring. I'm not aiming for a perfect blend from dark to pale in these colours. Um, yeah, I'm not taking a lot of care. I just wanted it to be pretty much rough and ready, um, but get some nice colour in there. 
And the colour parameter being rose garden is really quite open because we have a rose garden in our front yard and we have roses of all sorts of colours. Um, so there's all sorts of greens of the leaves. Not every leaf um, on a rose is the same green. And we have um, pink roses and we have um, white roses and we have yellow roses and we have red roses and we have dark red and we have uh, sort of apricotty red, uh, apricotty sort of orangey colours. And one of my favourite um, roses is Just Joey, which I try and make this one look like. It's sort of orangey towards the tips of the petals, but then the centre of the petals and the centre of the flower is more pink. Anyway, they're the colours that I used on my uh, roses. And now I'm going to cut out these tags. I originally was just going to cut out the small tag three times, but I changed my mind because I wanted a little bit more of the colouring um, to be shown on my final card. So I used a large tag for the centre one and the small tag for the other two and I decided that I wanted the tags to be completely colored so I added in some uh, uh, blues um, to color in the background kind of to match what I've done on the background of the card base but a little bit more intense than that because um, I wanted them to stand out a bit all right so I'm laying them on top of my um card base so that they line up perfectly with the image but I decided mm, I don't know if I like that so I went back in on the card base and I'm coloring in those images with gray Copic markers so I'm using cool grays here I'm not coloring in the entire image I'm leaving quite a fair bit of it white but I am going into all of the shadows and adding just a little bit of gray shading I just thought I needed a little bit more detail. It didn't quite look right the way it was. Okay, I'm just blending out the grey so it's not quite so stark um, with a paler grey colour. And then, yeah, just finishing touches there. And I thought that looked better. However, I still wasn't convinced because, I don't know, the tags, I didn't get the kind of contrast I was expecting Maybe I would have been, done better if I'd coloured in the roses a much darker colour. Maybe? I don't know. So what I decided to do was I've taken a darker cool grey and I'm actually tracing around the edges of those tags. So there is a very, very fine dark line, dark border around those tags. And I thought that looked a whole lot better um and gave me the contrast i was looking for so i was happy with that and i just stuck these on straight with some um, tape runner adhesive and um, that's my card base done and all i had left to do after that was to choose a sentiment and as i said earlier on may is the month of birthdays in our family we have my cousin uh, sorry my um nephew thomas my dad and my niece, uh, Lauren, and I have multiple friends who have birthdays. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by Geminis, quite honestly. <laughs> so many birthdays in May. Um, so I decided to make this a birthday card. So I've got this sentiment that I'd already cut out, stamped, embossed and cut out from Tailored Expressions. And I've popped that up onto my card and I've covered all four of those parameters from Craft Roulette. So I hope you enjoyed my process video and I hope you're joining Craft Roulette maybe this week or maybe next week. Bye.